Grounded theory is a very common research design. Grounded theory can be either realist or interpretive, and this study that I'm about to present is more of the interpretive kind. The example study is the intersection of organizational identity, knowledge and practice, attempting strategic change via knowledge crafting by NAG and co-authors. And this is a grounded theory study. And what grounded theory means is that on, on some level it means that the theory is built from data. In an extreme case, a researcher goes to the field and starts to study something as if a clean slate without any ideas of what the theory might be. And, but more generally, grounded theory refers to something where you enter the field, you might have some uh, ideas of what you might find or what you might study, but you might not fully have the concepts. So in grounded theory, the concepts typically emerge from the data. And they emerge from the data through a process called coding that I'll, I'll show in this uh, talk. The example article, the case, this is a single case study and uh, it presents uh, or tells the story of this company called Tecmar. And the Tecmar used to be an engineering organization that was spun out from a larger organization. And then they started developing their, uh, their identity as an independent business, but they remained very technology oriented. Then the management tried to make the organization more business oriented by bringing in uh, business people to run the organization. The scientists and engineers then reacted to this negatively and this study documents how the scientists and engineers in the organization understood the situation as a threat to their power in the organization, as a threat to their identity and ultimately resisted the knowledge craft initiative, which then failed. This study follows the GIA method. And in contrast to the Eisenhardt method, this method is much more interpretive. It focuses on understanding how the people in the organization understand the situation. And uh, how this study is carried out is that the interviews are coded. And coding means that you see seek meaning from the interviews and then you slowly increase the level of abstraction. So in contrast, to a Eisenhardt type of case study where you try to establish facts from cases and do triangulation. Here you build your understanding of what is going on by conceptually analyzing the data from the ground up. The outcome of this study, this kind of study is typically a narrative of what's going on, which is supported by quotes from the data and some graphical illustration of the process or the theory that they are, the, the, the study develops. The theory is not supposed to be generalizable or presented in the form of propositions, but it's more of a narrative description of how we can understand the case. In terms of these uh, three types of studies that the book presents, this is an interpretive study and it's more like what is going on study, like more abductive than uh, an inductive case study research where you would seek patterns. So there's no pattern seeking, there's more like seeking of understanding of what is going on and how people interpret the situation. In terms of the paradigm, this goes to the interpretive box because it's not focused on studying objective reality, but people's perceptions of reality. In terms of research design, this is a combination of field research and archival study. And it's partly archival because the researchers gain access to the research site when the knowledge crafting initiative where these uh, marketing people were brought to the organization had already started. So they had to cover the early parts of the knowledge craft initiative uh, through archival records. The research process is very iterative. There is uh, data analysis and data collection go hand in hand. And it's explained here. In this kind of study, you typically have a fairly long section of data collection because you're collecting data typically over a longer period of time as events unfold. And when you try to establish, try to understand how people see the situation, then uh, there might be conflicting understanding of the situation and you have to be very sensitive to uh, your, sub, your informants. And this is something that is emphasized in this research uh, method section, like how do you get these people to talk frankly about things that can be uh, kind of create co related to conflicts in the organization. In the analytical approach, uh, 
something called coding plays a large role. And uh, coding in this case refers to uh, abstracting the data. So you, you look at certain fragments of text and then from those text fragments you extract meaning. So for example, um, here they show examples of coding. So these are quotes from the actual interviews that they have. And then they identify that these two interviews A1 and A2 talk about the need for more market pull. These interviews uh, talk about the need for viewing clients as important. So you gain these uh, these smaller abstractions or you label these texts with these abstractions. And once you have established this first level coding, then you combine these first level codes into higher level codes and ultimately you have something like uh, this kind of like what they call data structure. So you might have this identity change imperative which includes um, a need for market pool and need for uh, viewing clients is more important and then you have other concepts here. So the idea is that the concepts emerge from the theory and once you have the, the concepts emerging from the theory then you typically uh, tell a story. You might have a, time, have a timeline like this in the study. This kind of study often concludes with the diagram presenting the theory and this particle case the theory contains two feedback loops. So the first feedback loop starts with uh, formal attempts to change the knowledge use practices in an organization. But how knowledge is used in an organization then threatens power react, uh, relations and then uh, that caused uh, provoked the engineers and scientists to try to pre try to maintain the current organizational identity which in turn are uh, created uh, challenges for the knowledge in use initiative and that in turn re-energized the management to try even harder to push new knowledge use practices. This interacted with uh, changing the organizational identity and, uh, and then that provoked these uh, engineers to try to uh, preserve the current uh, practices, preserve the current power uh, relations and then uh, that caused a block for implementing the organizational identity change and then that re-energized the management to try even harder. So ultimately this study and this theory is how uh, people perceive themselves in the organization, how they perceive their identity and how that affects power relations and how that affects their organizational outcomes. So it is, uh, this kind of grounding theory study is very much about understanding how the people understand the situation in contrast to more quantitative oriented studies that might quantify and compare cases whether they are high and low on certain attributes like the Eisenhardt type multiple case study.